welcome viewers to the fifth lecture of the open online course for an helical gear cutting. So, uh, we have finished four lectures in which we have uh, discussed about you know uh, gears in general their functions I mean what purpose they serve and uh, we have also discussed uh, some of the you know uh, calculational aspects of gears like what is module and uh, how to calculate gear ratios for uh, obtaining a particular uh, rotational speed from an initial rotational uh, rotating shaft by employing gears, what are the uh, you know geometrical uh, nomenclature of spur gears and helical gears etcetera and some specific uh, special type of gearing like worm and worm gear some uh, machine elements uh, mechanical uh, I mean uh, some mechanical um, uh, machine element pairs which will be required for our subsequent lectures like screw and nut mechanism etcetera all these things we have discussed and uh, today we will take up some numerical problems which will further help you to understand the you know the way in which gears can be employed to suit our different requirements. So, let us start right away and look into some of the numerical problems some uh, multiple choice questions both preliminary and difficult. So, the first one gears with the same module would always mesh with each other, would always have the same diameter, would always have the same number of teeth, none, none of the above. So, first of all gears with the same module, m is the same for all these gears and if you are dealing with a different system of units, for example, say uh, if you are expressing your diameter in inches, we would be saying gears with the same diametral pitch. Okay, which is basically z by d where d is the pitch diameter in inches and z is the number of teeth. So, what we are saying is that if such gears are taken which all of which have the same module they would always mesh with each other this is correct. So, in this multiple choice question we have identified the first one is definitely correct they would always mesh with each other second. So, we are talking of basically you know spur gears at this moment, uh, it can also be extended to uh, helical gears, but let us uh, restrict our discussion here. So, uh, we should uh, you know uh, slightly modify the question this way say spur gears with the same module would always mesh with each other, would always have the same diameter, no they are not supposed to have the same diameter, because you know uh, if a gear uh, of a family uh, if a, if in a family of gears with the same module if you go on increasing the number of teeth the diameter will increase. So, they are not necessarily going to have the same diameter would always have the same number of teeth no not at all because if you have all the gears of the same number of teeth what purpose would they serve except for you know uh, transmitting power from one shaft to another. So, and none of the above. So, E is correct would always mesh with each other. Gears having the same module would have larger teeth for larger diameters. So, all these gears have the same module we have taken a family of gears. So, if we take larger diameters we will find the teeth are being becoming larger and larger would have the uh, would have smaller teeth for less number of teeth. So, if you have less number of teeth you will find the teeth are becoming smaller in size would have larger teeth for higher number of teeth just the opposite none of the above. So, let us see one by one would have larger teeth for larger diameters. So, the first and foremost observation that we can make is that if you have the module to be the same then the size of the tooth becomes defined. If module is the same the size is size of the tooth is constant be it addendum or didendum or working depth or total depth 
or the chordal uh, addendum or the chordal thickness etc., etc. Everything is the same if the module is the same. So, none of the above. So, let us look at the uh, uh, question once again. There would not be larger teeth, there would not be smaller teeth and therefore, none of the above is correct. Now, for a numerical problem, what does this numerical problem state? States that the RPM of gear A would be the RPM of gear A would be you know uh, 20, 30, 32, none of the others. So, let us start from the beginning. Okay. There is a motor with 1000 RPM and it is connected with two spur gears. Let us quickly represent it on the uh, sheet of paper and uh, let us see the calculations. This happens to be the motor. Let us draw quickly because it is already there in front of us. This is our motor, it is rotating at 1000 rpm. These are just hypothetical values, you know, just to frame a question. 20, I, have, I am having 20, with that I am having 25. So, what do we do with this? We say we already know n2 by n1 is equal to z1 by z2. Therefore, n2 is equal to z1 by z2 into n1. n is the rpm, z is the number of teeth. So, if this be gear number 1 and if this be gear number 2, this is having 25 teeth and z 1 is equal to 20 teeth and n 1 is equal to 1000 rpm because it is sharing its rpm with the motor and n 2 is not known. So, what is n 2 going to be? n 2 is going to be let us put in z 1 20 divided by 25 multiplied by 1000. So, that gives us 20000 by 25. Let us not uh, cancel anything at this moment because there, there is something uh, down the line and after this, this we studied the last day that is how to read a drawing. What is this supposed to be? This is you know the symbol that we are using for a worm. There should be actually axis lines like this to show that they are uh, having an axis of rotation and it is axis symmetric. So, fine, this is a worm. How do we recognize a worm? K is equal to 2 is a giveaway. Number of starts of this worm is equal to 2. And after that, let us identify the worm gear. Yes, this is the worm gear. This is the worm, and this is the worm gear. So, what is the worm gear going to do? How many teeth does it have? It has 100 teeth. So, we will have n worm gear okay, divided by n worm must be equal to k by z, z worm gear, z worm gear okay, equal to. So, we have this one to be 2 by 100, 1 by 50. Do we know the worm rotation, n worm, do we know? Yes, this is sharing its rpm with gear number 2. So, this must be equal to n worm and k by z is already found out and therefore, we have n worm gear equal to 20,000 divided by 25 multiplied by 1 by 50. Okay. And what is required? This one is again connected with a bevel gear pair. This is the symbol of the bevel gear and it is taken out and given to gear A. How many number of feet does gear A have? It is not given. It does not matter whatever is the rotation of the worm gear, it is given to the bevel gear, it is given 
by 1 is to 1 ratio to the other bevel gear and that is sharing its rpm with gear A and that is it. If you can find out the worm gear rotation, you have found out the rot rotations per minute of E. So, this is the answer. Let us work it out 5, 5 sorry 0, 0. 5 cancels out with this 4, 0, 0. 25 cancels out with this 1 okay, and 150 and therefore, how much is that? 6, 16, none of the others. Let us have a quick look at the calculations. Have you made, a, made any mistake? N 2 is equal to N 1 into Z 1 by Z 2. Okay. And that means, this is 20 by 25 into 1000. So, this is slightly less than 1000 and this is being given to the worm. So, N worm gear by N worm is equal to 2 by 100, which is equal to 1 by 50. N worm goes upstairs and therefore, it is 20,000 divided by 25 into 1 by 50. So, 50 cancels with this 0, 0 cancels out initially and 5 4s are 20 and therefore, they, we have 4 0 0 25 goes into it how many times 25 1 16. Okay. So, the answer is 16 rpm that is good. <coughs> next, next we have none of the others is the answer. A similar problem, a similar problem. Let us see. First of all, the rpm of the gear box, sorry, the rpm of gear A is, uh, just a moment, I think something is missing here. Yes, something is missing here, the gearbox ratio, gearbox ratio. Uh, let me put some value here now. Uh, how much do we put here? Say, please assume gearbox ratio equal to 1 fourth. Okay, we start with gearbox ratio equal to 1 fourth. Achha, after this, so in that case, let us find out what is the rotations per minute of gear A. Motor rpm, so we start with motor rpm 1440 rpm. When it passes through the gear box, we simply multiply the ratio because this is equal to output by input. So, input multiplied by output by input is going to give us the output. Output rpm of the gear box must be equal to 1440 into 1 fourth. This one multiplied by this gear ratio which is coming after this, you know in these gear ratios that we have in the figure, okay, the figure is somewhat like this motor gear box and then gear 1, gear 2, gear 3 and gear 4. Then comes warm and simply a gear mounted on the form A and this is Z w g equal to 80 k equal to 2. So, in this case, this we have defined as 1 4, this is 1 4 4 0 and this is 1 2 3 4. Typically, this becomes you know you can show it by calculation this is z 1 by z 2 into z 3 by z 4 okay. multiplied by warm to warm gear. Once again, this must be warm rotations per minute. So, k by z okay, multiplied by k by z k is 2 and this is 80 and this uh, rotation is shared between gear A and the warm gear. So, this must be rotations per minute of A. All right. So, how much is this? 1 4 4 0 by 4 into let us see gear 1 as 
100 by 50 into z 3 is 50 sorry z 3 is this one it is 75 by 50 okay, into k is 2 and 80 is z. This is the answer. Uh, naturally, it would not match with the answer because I am, I am uh, very sorry that uh, uh, the, the gearbox ratio was not given. We have simply assumed some gearbox ratio and found it out. Uh, anyway, let us do the preliminary calculations. There are three zeros in the denominator, there are three zeros in the numerator and this one will definitely cancel out with this 3, 2, uh, 6, 4s are 24, so this is 36. So, 36 by 25 into 75 into 1 fourth, this gives us 3, this gives us 9, 9 threes are 27. So, N A is coming out to be 27. Okay? I, I suspect that the gearbox ratio in the actual problem which I had designed previously, it must have been half. In that case, it would have come out as 54. Okay? But anyway, whatever we have started with, this thing stands by itself. Okay? The rotations per minute of gear A would be 27 if we take this gear ratio to be one fourth, that is it. Okay? So, even though we are not able to do the problem exactly as stated here, because gearbox ratio is not mentioned, I am sure you have understood this. Thank you. So, let us pass on to another problem. A helical gear has normal module of 4, 200 teeth and helix angle of 15 degrees. The pitch diameter of the gear is nearest to in millimeters, 800 millimeter, 828.22 millimeter, 743 millimeters, and none of the others are near to the answer by less than 5 millimeters. That means none of them are correct basically. Okay. So, let us first see. Up till now, we have been discussing about uh, spur gears. Now, we are talking about helical gears, and last in the last lecture, we had talked about a problem of this type. What was this problem? The problem was this that if you have a spur gear with module equal to 4 and teeth equal to 200, we can straight away calculate the pitch diameter to be module into the number of teeth equal to 800 in this case. Let us write down diameter. sorry, pitch diameter d p of spur gear equal to uh, 200, sorry, let us let us give the symbol first, m into z equal to 4 into 200 equal to 800 millimeters. However, for the helical gear, this is the spur gear, so, yeah. these are the teeth of a helical gear. In a helical gear, what happens is that this distance taken normal to the tooth orientation, this one corresponds to okay, these dimensions. If you take a section here, it will be coming something like this. This section if you take it. If you cut it along this, you will see the teeth this way and this one corresponds to the measurements as per 
this module this module that is why this is said to be corresponding to the normal module okay, m n. In this direction however, it is slightly larger naturally this distance is replaced by this distance if you take a section this way. Okay. So, we are when we are mentioning this 4, okay, we are talking about if you look at the problem once, we are talking about normal module. So, in the figure coming back to the uh, hand drawn figure, we are talking about this distance these distances they correspond to the normal module. Okay. Hence, if that is so the diameter which is existing here and which is the summation of E, E, E like that okay, it is slightly larger than the you know you know the distances which are obtained by the calculation of the normal module. So, each of these sections they are replaced by this value and what is this angle if you remember this angle is equal to the helix angle in this case say this is 15 degrees 15 degrees this angle let me draw it Fifteen degrees. So, if this is 15 degrees, this is a right angle and therefore, this angle will be 15 degrees. Okay. This angle will be 15 degrees and therefore, we find if this is equal to x, this one is equal to I mean E is equal to we can write E is equal to x by cos 15 degrees right and how many e's make up the full diameter if you go fully round as many number of teeth as many e values so instead of having x values here the diameter is made up of z into x by cos 15. Let us replace 200 multiplied by now what is this x equal to? This x is equal to the distance covered by one tooth. Okay. How much is that? That must be equal to pi into m. So, pi into m okay, divided by cos 15 degrees. If you find this out, okay, I think it will be coming out to be 828.22. So, please calculate this because the top one, mm, 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 just one moment, yeah, uh, if, if you look at this figure. this distance which we are showing here this distance is nothing but the total okay this total divided by number of teeth pi m z divided by z so it's pi m so this thing is equal to the circumference right so if you divide the circumference by pi this cancels out and this becomes equal to 200 into module by cos 15 which is equal to how much is that 800 by cos 15 degrees 800 by cos 15 degrees and that will come out to be 828.22 millimeters. So, I hope this is all right. This is equal to pi into m. We go on adding pi m's divided by cos 15 degrees z number of times and we get this value. Okay. 
So, the answer is 822.22 millimeters. So, what we observe is that the pitch diameter of the helical gear is going to have higher diameter than the corresponding spur gear if they have the same normal module. Power has to be transmitted from shaft A to shaft B. The center distance of the shafts is 750 millimeters and the speed ratio output by input is to be 1 is to 2. That means, the speed has to come down to half of its original value. If one spur gear pair is to be employed with module of 2, the number of teeth on the driven gear is 20, 250, 225 none of the others. Okay. So, uh, let us write out this is the center distance. How much is this? This is equal to 750. I have to employ two gears say hypothetically let me draw them. This is one gear and this is another gear. I have to employ them. What are their diameters? I do not know, but if these are representing the pitch diameters d p 1 and d p 2, in that case I can say that definitely the speed ratio n 2 by n 1 must be equal to d p 2 sorry. d p 1 by d p 2. That means, if n 2 is less d p 1 must be less. Okay. So, having uh, uh, how do we get this from the basic definition of pitch diameters we are obtaining this. What is d p 1 plus d p 2 equal to well d p 1 by 2 plus d p 2 by 2 is simply equal to this distance plus this distance r p 2 and r p 1. So, it must be 750. So, we write d p 1 by 2 plus d p 2 by 2 must be equal to 750 that is good. What is n 2 by n 1 supposed to be? n 2 by n 1 is supposed to be half. So, we further get, so let us send this to that side d p 1 plus d p 2 must be equal to 1500 and d p 1 equal to sorry twice d p 1 is equal to d p 2 that is good. Let us replace d p 2. So, we get thrice of d p 1 is equal to 1500. Therefore, d p 1 is equal to 500 and therefore, d p 2 must be equal to how much let us see d p 1 is equal to 500. So, d p 2 must be equal to 1000 which means So, the diameters have been found out. So, let us see what is to be calculated. So, is this understood that d p 1 and d p 2 can be found out from two relations that is the center distance which is equal to the sum of the two radii that is equal to 7 5 7 50 and d p 1 by d p 2 is equal to the ratio of the rotations per minute stated. By using those two we have solved d p 1 and d p 2 but the question is different. Let us look at the question. If one spur gear pair is to be employed with module 2, the number of teeth on the driven gear is this is the driven gear, driven gear. Is it serving the purpose? Yes. As it is connected with a, with a smaller gear, if this has r p m x, this r p m will be less than x. Okay. 
So, because it is larger in size and in fact, we know their um, diameter values the, exactly the diameter will be brought down by a factor of half, okay. a factor of 2 the uh, rpm will be brought down by a factor of 2. So, everything is satisfied now we have to find out the number of teeth on the driven gear number of teeth. So, z has been asked for. So, what we can say is that since d p 2 is known to be 1000 millimeters and module is equal to 2. So, we can write this must be equal to module 2 multiplied by the number of teeth. Therefore, z is equal to 500. Answer is none of the above. Why have we uh, given a question in which none of the above is the answer? The reason is this very frequently students make a mistake they put d p 1 plus d p 2 is equal to 750 and immediately they will get an answer of 250. They will say aha 250 is there and they will tick on 250. Okay. This is a trick tricky part of the question you have to be extremely alert. So, answer is none of the others. Uh, I think we have just uh, uh, one or two minutes, so that I will just introduce this problem and ask you to solve yourselves and I will provide the answer in one of the subsequent lectures and if time is there I will discuss it as well. A student is developing a setup in which he intends to rotate a fan at 8640 rpm from a motor rotating at 1440 rpm. Okay. So, almost 6 times the rpm has to be increased. He has the following gears with him which are the ones that he should employ in a gearbox which has only two shafts with center distance of 240 millimeters. So, let us have a look at the figure. This is the proposed figure motor 140 rpm gear with it gear to a, a, a you know auxiliary shaft and this one sharing rpm giving it to another another gear which is loosely fitted on the first gear not rotating uh, not having any rotational relation with the first gear first shaft and this one is connected with the fan. So, with only two uh, two shafts we are able to bring down the rpm once here and once there. So, what should be the answer? Okay. You can think about this we will discuss the answer in one of the subsequent lectures. Thank you very much.